Welcome to part two of using the method of reduction of order in order to find a second solution and the general solution to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation. To review, our second order differential equation must be in this form here and because p of x, q of x, and r of x will not be constants, we cannot use a characteristic equation, but we can use the method of reduction of order if we're given one solution to the differential equation. So the technique of reduction of order is a method for reducing a second order differential equation to a linear first order differential equation, which we can then solve using separation of variables or using an integrating factor. The way this method works is that we assume that the second solution, y sub two of x, is equal to u of x, some function of x, times y one of x, where y one of x is the given solution. Then we find y prime and y double prime, perform substitution into the given differential equation, which we can then reduce to a linear first order differential equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. First, notice how the given differential equation fits the form, and we're given one solution. So we'll start by assuming that y sub two of x, or just y of x, is equal to some function of x, u of x, times the given solution, y one of x. Which means we're gonna let y be equal to just u times x to the power of negative one. And now because we're assuming this is a solution, we'll now find y prime and y double prime and then perform substitution into the differential equation. So y prime is going to require the product rule. Well, the first function u times the derivative of x to the power of negative one, which will be negative x raised to the power of negative two. So we have negative x raised to the power of negative two times u plus the second function x to the negative one times u prime. And now we'll find y double prime. Again, to find the derivative of each term, we'll have to apply the product rule. So we'll have the first function times the derivative of the second. That's going to be negative x to the negative two times u prime plus the second u times the derivative of negative x to the negative two. That's going to be two x to the negative three. So we have two x to the negative three times u plus the derivative of the second term, so we'll have x to the negative one times u double prime plus u prime times the derivative of x to the negative one, so that's gonna end up being minus x to the negative two times u prime. But notice how if we take a look at this first term and the fourth term, they are like terms, and therefore y double prime is gonna be equal to two x to the negative three u minus two x to the negative two u prime plus x to the negative one u double prime. So now using y, y prime, and y double prime, we'll perform substitution into the original differential equation. So we'll have x squared times y double prime, that'll be x squared times two x to the power of negative three u minus two x to the negative two u prime plus x to the negative one u double prime plus three x times y prime, which is negative x to the negative two u plus x to the negative one u prime and then we have plus y, which is, let's write this as x to the negative one u, and we know this must equal zero. Next, we'll clear the parentheses by distributing. We'll distribute here and here. So we'll have two x to the negative one u. Remember, we're adding the exponents on the x, and then minus, this would just be two u prime, plus x u double prime. Here we'll have minus three x to the negative one u, and then plus three u prime. Remember this is x to the first, 
and then finally plus x to the negative one u equals zero. Now let's combine like terms, but let's focus on the u terms. We have three u terms, one here, here, and here. Notice how they sum to zero because we have two x to the negative one u minus three x to the negative one u. That's negative one x to the negative one u plus positive one x to the negative one u, that would be zero. And this should always happen when applying the reduction of order method. The u terms should always sum to zero. Leaving us with x u double prime, then looking at the u terms, notice how we have just plus one u prime or plus u prime equals zero. And now from here, we'll perform a substitution we're going to let w equal u prime, and therefore w prime equals u double prime. This is why it's called the reduction of order method. But performing these substitutions, we'll be forming a linear first order differential equation. We'll have x w prime plus w equals zero. So now we're going to solve this for w, and once we find w, we can integrate to find u. Let's go ahead and take this differential equation to the next slide. Let's first replace w prime with the w dx. So we have x dw dx equals, let's move the w to the right side, so we'll have negative w, which means x dw is equal to negative w dx. Now we'll divide both sides by x, and divide both sides by w. So this would give us one divided by w dw equals negative one divided by x dx. And now we'll integrate both sides. This will give us natural log w equals, here we'd have negative natural log x plus a constant c. And now we'll exponentiate both sides of the equation. So e raised to the power of natural log w must equal e raised to the power of negative natural log x plus c. Now remember, we can think of this as negative one times natural log x, and therefore we can rewrite this as natural log x raised to the power of negative one. So left side simplifies to w, then on the right side, we can write this as e raised to the power of natural log x to the power of negative one times e to the power of c. Well, e to the c is just another constant, which we'll call c sub two, and e raised to the power of natural log x to the negative one simplifies to just x to the negative one. So we have w equals x to the power of negative one times, we'll call it c sub two, or just c sub two divided by x. So now we'll take w to the next slide and then find u. Remember that w was equal to u prime, and our goal was to find y, which was equal to u times x to the negative one. So once we find u, we'll have y, which will give us our second solution and our general solution. So we'll substitute u prime for w, so we know that u prime, or du dx, is equal to c sub two divided by x, which means differential u is equal to c sub two divided by x dx. And now we'll integrate both sides. So we now know that u of x must be equal to, this would be c sub two natural log x plus another constant, which we'll call c sub one. Well, now that we know u, since we started with y equals u times y sub one, or x to the negative one, we now know that y is equal to c sub two natural log x plus c sub one times x to the negative one. Well, notice this product here will actually give us a general solution, which we can then use to find a second solution. Our general solution would be y of x equals c sub two x to the negative one natural log x, or if we want, c sub two natural log x divided by x plus c sub one divided by x. 
Notice how when c sub two equals zero and c sub one equals one, we do get the given solution, and therefore to find a second solution, or y sub two of x, we can let c sub one equals zero and c sub two equal one, therefore y sub two of x, a second solution would be natural log x divided by x. So here's our general solution, and here's a second solution. We're going to look at this problem again using the shortcut formula in the next video. I hope you found this helpful.